Welcome to Today with Marilyn and Sarah. Oh, we are absolutely elated and ecstatic to get to be with you today, but what God wants to speak to you and minister into your heart. Oh my goodness, we have been eagerly anticipating and waiting for this opportunity for a very long time. So we want to share some things with you that God has put on our heart. But before we jump into that, just want to encourage you that you may be watching right now and you have some needs in your life. There's not a person watching that couldn't use a little help probably with your finances. You probably are watching and need a little help maybe with your healing, with your body, some physical needs. You probably are watching and you might have some emotional or some relationship needs. We all have needs in our life and needs are nothing more than opportunities for God to come in and be God. So I want to encourage you, pick up the phone and let us pray for you. We like to pray for you and we don't mind praying for any need in your life. Nothing is too small, nothing is too big. We like to pray for you. It's an honor and a privilege for us. So get on the phone or get on the website. And those are very convenient. That's a convenient way for you to leave a prayer request with us at your, at your convenience. 24-7 on the website is very easy, very fast. And, and we get it and pray for you right away. So do that because we know God does amazing things when we live in the Word. He unlocks the miraculous. Exactly. It's just absolutely true. And try true. to unlock the miraculous without the word. Good luck. <laughs> but it's the other way. Yeah, you bang your head it, against the wall. Yeah, it doesn't work well. Mm -mm. You know, you say, oh, I need a miracle, but you don't have a promise mm -hmm. that goes with the problem. Yeah. So that is very, very key. Ah, Mom, I know. we get to talk We're about excited. songs. We get to talk about <laughs> songs. And the, here's the truth of it is, I remember when I was uh, growing up, initially I used to think, ah, Psalms is no big deal. You know, it's just everybody yeah. likes Psalms. It's really calm and popular move on. But something that really hit me, Mom, and I want to share just a, a quick personal testimony about yes. Psalms and what it means to me on a very personal level, deeply personal level. You know, Mom, in my early 20s, I had my faith crisis, yeah. you know, where I was like, I don't believe this Jesus stuff, you know, and I, it wasn't, I wasn't trying to be rebellious. I, know. I was trying to own my own faith. I wasn't trying mm -hmm. to disappoint you or dishonor you or no, dad. I was no. just trying to wrap my arms around my own faith. Right. God doesn't have grandchildren. You right, know, and right. so I wanted to be know him as my father. Right. And uh, I went on a search, but I remember when I began to give my life back to Christ. And I remember, I remember laying. Remember the study, Mike's old bedroom. Yes. And uh, we converted it into a library study, study yeah, area. Yeah. And I used to sleep on the floor at night in there just because it was comfortable. I don't know why, but I did. But I remember one time laying in, on the floor in, in January. I'll never forget it. Laying on the floor in there. And I just was kind of having some nice prayer fellowship with God. And it just started to, to speak. He started to speak to me and share with me and show me, you know, Sarah, you walked away from me, but I loved you the whole time that you were looking, that you were searching, that you were... Uh, exploring. And he, and he just started to sweep over me. And I remember reading Psalms 42 verse 7. And this it still breaks me down when I think of it because it's just a tremendous love of God. And it says, deep calls to deep at the sound of your waterfalls. All your breakers and your waves have rolled over me. And I remember laying on the floor and just sensing the presence and the power and the love of God, like waves sweeping over me and over me and over me. And I know it, I just felt like I am so undeserving. And yet his love was so overwhelming and it just ripped me down to the core. And I was like, oh my goodness, God, how could I have ever turned away from you? You are so good to me. And that verse, Psalms 42, verse 7, it still marks me. I mean, I still, it still stirs me up in my heart. It still moves me to this day. I mean, more than 20 years later, it moves me to this day. And that comes from the Psalms. Right, right. And the Psalms are so deeply personal. Right. And you know, one of the things, and I was praying about sharing today, you know, and sharing with our audience. And, and one of the things that so touches me about the Psalms, Mom, is they're not all about God, you know, and, and oftentimes, you know, you read about God, you know, throughout the Bible and it talks about God. He is, you know, and, and it refers to him in the third person. But Psalms, what, one of the richest things about Psalms is that it's a lot of conversation between the first and the second person, between me and you. Mm -hmm. And it's the, the human talking to God and referring to God, not as he out there, but you, 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 and it's very personal and it's, it doesn't, it removes some of that distance in that, that far away, that obscure, that disconnected, distanced entity and moves God into that face-to-face -face communion, that face-to-face -face fellowship. And what I love about the Psalms is it takes your daily living and integrates God into that. 
what, however that looks. I mean, you see some of these people pouring out their hearts, saying some pretty, whoo, <laughs> hardcore things. Right. But Psalms is so deeply personal. And one thing I love about it, it's probably twice as big as any other book in the whole Bible. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think it is there's so much personal content for our relationship with God that it takes twice as much interaction That's good. just to kind of get us, you know, introduced into. Because God is so personal, Mom. He's not remote. He's not distant. He's not far away, detached and disinterested. He's deeply, deeply personal, deeply intimate, intimate and deeply connected with our daily living. You may be watching right now and, and you may not have a relationship with God. You may be saying, Sarah, you're describing something that sounds so fantastic, but I don't have that. And I want to pray with you. I want to take just a brief moment to help you invite God, to help you invite Jesus into your life so that he's not so remote and far away and distant, but he's deeply personal to you up close and in your life in a daily way. And maybe you've walked away from God and this is a fresh opportunity for you to begin a walk with God. I talked about that in my own life and in, in my own experience with that. But I wanna pray with you today that God would come into your life in a, in a very personal way and daily live and interact and, and, and be involved in your life. So let's say this prayer together. Dear Heavenly Father, and just repeat this with me. Thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for me. I'm sorry for the wrong things that I've done. Please come into my heart, Jesus. Be my Lord and Savior from this moment for the rest of eternity. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Mom, that's the brand, brand new beginning. And Psalms is really written out of people's experiences yeah. with God. Yeah. So they're not just talking about facts. They're talking about experience. Right. I think that's why you love them so yeah. much. And really, Jesus quoted more from Psalms than mm. any one book of the Old Testament. Mm. And Psalms is more quoted throughout the Bible mm. than any one book. Wow. So it's very, very key book. And I want to share with you today, it was really written to be uh, a song. The mm -hmm. Psalms are written mm -hmm. to be sung. Is that sweet? And so they took these 150 Psalms and divided them like the Pentateuch. Mm -hmm. So they said, now, if you want Psalms and you want to sing to God, you want to pray to God, the sovereignty of God. Now, when we talk about Pentateuch, not everybody knows what okay. Pentateuch is. What's a Pentateuch? Okay, the Pentateuch would be Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, yep. the first five books of the Old Testament. Yep. So they said, now, if you want to sing psalms that have to do with God's sovereignty, like Genesis is the beginning, you know, mm -hmm. how God set it all up, then we'll put the first 42 psalms. Mm. So they took them from all of these various writers because David wrote some of the Psalms, Solomon did, Asaph did, mm -hmm. Korah did, Hezekiah even wrote some Psalms. Moses. Moses wrote some mm -hmm. Psalms. And Solomon. Solomon, absolutely. And some of them are called orphan Psalms because mm -hmm. they don't know who wrote them. Right. So they put them in categories. So if you wanted to sing about how God is big, He's sovereign, He takes over, He'll make it work for good. They just put those and called them Genesis Psalms. Mm. So they're Psalms 1 through 42. Mm -hmm. So when you, and like you loved Psalm 42, mm -hmm. God really spoke to you mm -hmm. out of that. Mm -hmm. And so that is God's sovereignty. He loves you no matter what you do. Right. And you experience that love. But mom, there are people watching who need to experience that love. Oh, yes. They need a sovereign intervention, a sovereign right. move of God in their lives. And so I want to encourage you to get on the phone. Let us pray for you. You're watching right now and you say, I need a divine interruption. I need God to involve himself, to engage, to show up and show off. We want to pray for you that God would come and, and absolutely have a sovereign interruption, intervention in your life. So get on the phone or get on the website. We want to pray for you that this area of Psalms would be very alive to you and God would, God would be sovereign and interrupt and intervene in your life. And then, Sarah, if you go to the next series of Psalms, how they divided them up to be sung mm -hmm. again, to be read, to be meditated on, to be mm -hmm. prayed, it would take the Exodus Psalms. Right. So that's the second grouping in the Pentateuch. Mm -hmm. Pentateuch just means five. Right. And so these are redemptive Psalms. Right. So, you know, you need redemption. You've blown it. You've made a mess of things. Mm -hmm. And that's like Psalm 42 through 79. 
-hmm. So those are the redemption psalms. So you think of Psalm 51, mm -hmm. where David so repented. Right. Oh, my goodness. Right. So we look at, there is redemption available for us. And he repented, and that was the whole, that's the psalm that talks about his feelings, his emotions, his oh. reactions from the shortcoming with Bathsheba. Yeah. And when he slept with Bathsheba and had Uriah, her husband, killed in a battle, I mean, he did some really raunchy things. And maybe you're watching right now and you've made some raunchy decisions and there's consequences that are just brutal and you need some help from God. You need God to possibly intervene and, and maybe change and redeem. Maybe you need some redemption. So please get on the phone. We want to pray for you that God would redeem your mistakes, redeem your errors and make more good come out of it than what you started with or get on the website. But we want to pray for you that God would not only be sovereign, but God would also be redemptive. And no matter what you've done, mm -hmm. no matter how ugly it is, you know, you can read those Psalms mm -hmm. and they'll be very encouraging to you. You know, that God can forgive you. He can redeem you. He can set you free. And Exodus is the freeing book. Mm -hmm. You know, they left Egypt and they left free and they left blessed and they left with divine direction. So these Psalms are called Exodus Psalms mm -hmm. because they free you they give you direction, they give you encouragement, and their prosperity. I mean, they left rich. You know, they left very prosperous. And so when you read these Psalms, keep that in mind. And they sang them. Isn't that mm -hmm. wonderful? So perhaps you can sing them, you know, your own melody. Mm -hmm. And we do sing Psalms mm -hmm. and, you know, we love to sing Psalms, but we're going to come back in just, just a minute. So stay right there because we've got three other segments from the Pentateuch and the Psalms break down to three other segments. This is so exciting, so applicable to you. Your gift of support makes it possible to keep encouraging faith-building teaching like this coming to you and your neighbors. And right now, if you can share a gift of any size, we want to say thank you by rushing you the five-part audio series titled Psalms, A Pathway to the Heart of God. In these teachings, Marilyn and Sarah show you how to use the Psalms as a roadmap into God's presence and power. And for a limited time, if you can share a seed gift of $50 or more, we'll include two of Marilyn's personal hardcover study books. Hebrew Honey is an incredible resource filled with word studies that simplify the basic meanings of Hebrew root words. Each selected word from the Bible was traced to its Hebrew origin and explained simply for you to enjoy. Psalms Classic Edition is a beautiful gold edge book that explains each of the 150 Psalms, complete with the Psalms Crisis Concordance to help guide you through everyday struggles. To sow a seed gift and receive your special thank you resources, call or click right now. This could be one of the most important times you've ever watched television. Why? Because Psalms are so powerful in your daily living. And we've been looking at how it breaks down like the Pentateuch. They broke the Psalms into five segments and they called them Genesis Psalms, Exodus Psalms, Leviticus Psalms, and then they called them Numbers Psalms and Deuteronomy Psalms, and they had specific themes. So when we looked at the Genesis Psalms, we saw that was like Psalm 1 through 42, and that had to do with the sovereignty of God. And then when we look at the Exodus Psalms, and I said, you know, 40, 
uh, 2, 43 through 79 is through 72. And you can get the download of this on mm -hmm. our website yep. so that you have your own breakdown because this is very important for you. So we look at these wonderful Exodus Psalms that have to do with redemption, that he sets us free no matter what the mess is. And Psalm 51 is in mm -hmm. that redemptive Psalms. So now, Sarah, you're taking us on right. to Leviticus. Right. And these, these Psalms are from Psalm 73 to 89. Right. And this is about how to approach God. You know, different, yeah. different, the things that are required and expectations and, and also interactions with God. You know, how do we interact and what does he say to us and what do we say to him? And one of the things I so deeply love about the Psalms is the honesty. Oh, I the guess. honesty of Woo. whoever's saying, whether it's David, Moses, Solomon, whoever's, I mean, they're really, oh my goodness, they're blunt. Right, right. <laughs> they're just totally blunt. But I love that God is blunt back. You know, he says, look, you know, I'm going to work on these things and I'm going to talk to your enemies and I'm going to deal with you and your sin and your private issues. And I love that God, he wants us to approach him, but to do it in a way that's going to be constructive for us. And so Psalm 73 to 89 talks about uh, kind of like Leviticus and the sanctuary and sanctuary, or, you know, how it's set up, the worship and everything talks about that. And uh, those are so important to us. But then the, the fourth breakdown, mom, would be the numbers part. And numbers talking a little bit about the history of Israel. And so you read about these from uh, Psalms 90 to ver chapter 106. 90 from 106. And that goes back and recounts uh, some of the historical moves of God and what God's done in history. And I think that's just a fantastic practice to do, not only that we read about in Psalms, but in our lives. That we go back and take an inventory. Well, God has done this and God has done this and God has done this. And look at what he did here and look at what he did here. I find that when I look for God, that's what I find. And it helps you to believe for the miraculous. Yeah. And again, you know, if you live in the word, you'll unlock right. the miraculous. Right. And maybe today you're sitting there and saying, I could use a few miracles. Well, call us. And, you know, we, we pray the promise. We pray the promise with the problem. We don't pray the problem only because that promise is so important for you. Mm -hmm. So pick up the phone, you know, call us or call for a loved one. We don't counsel, but we just love to pray. Or you can leave it on the website. And then the website, you can get right. this outline. The download, yeah, yeah, for that outline of all this. And it helps us when we have some of those outlines, it helps us kind of chunk it, you know, break it into pieces and kind of helps us organize it and interact with it a little bit. And where to go mm -hmm. when you have a need. Right. And that's important. Right. So, you know, I need to know how to get to God better. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to turn to the Le mm -hmm. Leviticus Psalms. Mm -hmm. Or I need to see how God moved so historically mm -hmm. in Israel mm -hmm. to believe for Israel for today. We need right. to pray for Israel. Right. Well, if God took them through all of that, right. is he going to bring them through today? Right. Right. And not only for Israel, but for us. You bet. If you look at what God, and sometimes I'll read that, I'll be like, oh my goodness, look at what God did back here. And that gives me faith for what he'll do now and into the future. Yes. And we all need that. We all oh. need those boosts of faith that, oh my goodness, God did this and this and this and this. Oh, then he can do this today. So if you have a need in your life, we want to pray for you and uh, get on the website or call us. And remember as well, you can download this outline and it'll help you a whole bunch to encourage your faith and help you grow uh, in the Psalms, but also let the Psalms grow in you. And mom, I want to just take just this little tiny rabbit trail for a second because yes. these Psalms, when they, when they wrote them, they wrote them and they sang them. Yes. And that's so powerful because uh, to this day, I think part of the reason just on a logical, without, you know, excluding God, but just on a logical understanding, part of the reason why we have so many Psalms, 150 of them, is because they sang them. And whenever you sing things, it helps you remember stuff better. True. And so we have a whole, whole collection of them because they would sing them. And the Psalm, they wrote songs to God, Psalms to God, and they, they worshiped God and they wrote their own love songs to God. They're on pouring out their own stuff. And, and just because they did that back then doesn't mean that we cannot do that today. The New well, Testament talks about it. Absolutely. See, speaking to yourself in, in Psalms, Psalms and hymns, hymns and spiritual yep. songs, mm -hmm. singing and making melody mm -hmm. in your heart to mm -hmm. the Lord. And Sarah, we really have seen that in Wally's life mm -hmm. because right. he Psalms and 
prophetic right. utterance, and he sings in it right. also, and it rhymes. Right. And so we can have our own personal psalm. That's right. so sweet to me. Yep. And if you think, you know, sometimes when you're in real distress, if you could just center in with God yep. and then just say, okay, God, yep. and let him sing mm -hmm. through you mm -hmm. the revelation mm -hmm. for that occasion mm -hmm. to bring you through, because that's absolutely what mm -hmm. Psalms is. It's the songbook. Yep. But it, you can have your own song with God. Mm -hmm. I mean, the scripture teaches this twice in the New Testament, and we have seen mm -hmm. it. And we've also seen one of our pastors now yep. who moves in that same yep. mantle. It fell on him yep. in particular. But Sarah, what is the last the one? The last one is Deuteronomy, and it's Psalms uh, 107 to 150 talking about the words of God. And yeah. uh, I know this has one of your favorites because it's got Psalms 119 right. in it. And you memorize oh, that. Right. Such a rich psalm. Oh. oh, my goodness. Longest chapter in the Bible, mm -hmm. but and all on the Word. True. And one thing that's really cool about Psalms 119, just to look at that specifically, is it breaks down into the Hebrew alphabet. Exactly. You know, Cross it does Aleph, Bet, Gimel, Dalit, Hey, you know, all that. And so each letter of the Hebrew alphabet has one part of, of the, like of the song. Verses, yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's just rich and you read through it. And But it talks about the power of the word. Your word have I hidden in my heart that I will not sin against God. You know, all the talks of word, the precepts, the principles, the testimonies of the Lord, the word of the Lord, just rich, rich, rich. And, and really... And I say this, we, we like to tell you this, that when you live the word, you unlock the miraculous. And when you live, and specifically in Psalms, Psalms will unlock the miraculous in your life in ways you've never experienced before. And you'll see God do things and speak to you and, and minister to you in ways you've never experienced Him before. And there'll be an intimacy with God that you can have through Psalms that you've never had before. And mom, you know, I know that we have, dad has done Psalms, you know, singing and right. making melodies and all that. Yep, yeah. and same with Pastor Pat, he does yes. that, which is cool. But you know, here's a little secret. Sometimes I do this in the car when I'm driving by myself mm -hmm. and I'll sing. Yeah. And, you know, because nobody's listening, you know, they're not going to say, wow, that was off tune or, <laughs> right. oh, my goodness. But I can roll up the windows, you know, yeah. and uh, as somebody thinks I'm talking on the phone. That's OK. I don't mind what people think, but I will psalm to God mm -hmm. and I'll sing to him just as I'm driving, you know, running errands, grocery store, picking up kids, doing this and that. But I'll do that. And that's a really rich way to, to deepen our walk with God. And, and the download for all of this, you know, is available on the website for the structure and the organization, right. the breakdown of it. But just a really fantastic way for us to grow in our walk with God. And these acrostic psalms where they have mm -hmm. the Hebrew letters, those are pictures. Yep. So God gave a picture of what he was saying in those verses. So, you know, like Psalm 37 is an acrostic psalm. Mm -hmm. Psalm 34, and some of those are through David, mm -hmm. that he saw mm -hmm. also the revelation of what God was giving him, and he began to sing it. Mm -hmm. And so these men have left something for us mm -hmm. that we can sing and mm -hmm. we can see the Word made flesh yep. in our own lives. Yep. And perhaps today you say, oh man, I need to see a manifestation of God's Word in my life. Mm -hmm. I want to encourage you to call us and get prayer. I want to encourage you to even get on the website for prayer. And of course, you need to get this outline mm -hmm. of how the breakdown is because everybody likes Psalms. Mm -hmm. Psalms and Proverbs, everybody likes them because they're so heart, you know, they're emotional. Mm -hmm. They're so connecting you to God. So I encourage you uh, to Take time to wait on God like Sarah does. Roll up the windows and sing to God. Mm -hmm. Sometimes in the night I have done that. Mm -hmm. You know, I wake up and I'm disturbed and let God sing through me. Mm -hmm. Oh, and it's sweet mm -hmm. and precious. And God wants that sweet, precious relationship with all of us. God bless you today. Your gift of support makes it possible to keep encouraging faith-building teaching like this coming to you and your neighbors. And right now, if you can share a gift of any size, we want to say thank you by rushing you the five-part audio series titled Psalms, A Pathway to the Heart of God. 
In these teachings, Marilyn and Sarah show you how to use the Psalms as a roadmap into God's presence and power. And for a limited time, if you can share a seed gift of $50 or more, we'll include two of Marilyn's personal hardcover study books. Hebrew Honey is an incredible resource filled with word studies that simplify the basic meanings of Hebrew root words. Each selected word from the Bible was traced to its Hebrew origin and explained simply for you to enjoy. Psalms Classic Edition is a beautiful gold edge book that explains each of the 150 Psalms, complete with the Psalms Crisis Concordance to help guide you through everyday struggles. To sow a seed gift and receive your special thank you resources, call or click right now. We are so excited because for the first time in the history of our ministry, we get to do a group trip, Mom, and bring you with us to Ethiopia. Oh, and I can't even begin to tell you how excited I am that you can come with us and minister and see amazing things in Ethiopia. Mom, tell us what some of the things are that we're well, seeing. Well, we're going to visit Aksum, and Aksum is where they say they have the Ark of the Covenant. I mean, Ethiopia is mentioned over 90 times in the Bible. That is so interesting there. And then we're going to be going to Lalibela, which is where the Rock Hewn Church is. That is considered one of the seven wonders of the world in this timing. And of course, the healing meetings we will have in Addis Ababa. You will love it. And God wants you to go. Why? Because I want you to use your hands to lay hands on the sick and to help us bring a great revival to this wonderful nation. Come with us. I think it's very important that we always keep in mind the end where we're going. And it's important we think about, well, you know, I want to go to heaven. I, that's important to me. The end of my life, I want to be in heaven. And when we think that way, it's interesting what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 25. He talks about kind of some reverse engineering. You say, what do you mean by that? Well, Jesus talks about, he says, uh, come you who are blessed of my father in verse 35, for I was hungry and you gave me something to eat, thirsty, you gave me something to drink, stranger, you invited me in, naked and clothed me. I was sick, you visited me, I was in prison and you came to me. And it's interesting because this whole, whole context of these verses is the judgment day. And what Jesus is saying is on judgment day, God's going to kind of look at your life and make an assessment. You know, and, and, it, and it says here, you came and visited me in jail, brought me food, all this stuff. And what the people say here is, you know, what are you talking about? When did we do that? And Jesus says in verse 40, truly I say to you, to the extent that you did this to the least of these, you did this to me. And that's what saving Moses is all about. To the least of these. Saving Moses is our hardcore mission to help small people, babies, zero to five, babies and toddlers, zero to five, where the need is most urgent and the care is least available. That's the least of these. And the truth of it is the smallest, most tiniest, remote, obscure little baby that desperately needs help is the least of these. And that's why we have Saving Moses, because it's a phenomenal opportunity to minister, to connect, to express genuine love to the least of these. So that when we get up in heaven on judgment day and God rolls through those things, oh my goodness, you were helping the least of these. You were helping with saving Moses. What a great opportunity to express genuine.